Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar on the 12 key processes where internets truly deliver. So my name is Viv Rowe and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator here at LCOP. So now over to you Kevin. Thanks Siv. Uh, good afternoon everyone. I hope you've got your lunch in front of you. Um, welcome to another webinar in our series. So we've been running a series of webinars um, aimed at helping our clients and intranet managers at large get the absolute most um, out of their intranets. Your intranet can really be the heart of the organization. It can be the company Google, the company Facebook, and the company Wikipedia all rolled into one. And today we're going to share with you some tips and tricks on, on how to make that actually happen. Um, my name's Kevin Oliver. Uh, I've been working in Elcom and with intranets for about eight years now. Um, and I'll take you through some key processes that as intranet managers, um, we really believe you should try and get done and delivered through the intranet. Uh, quick agenda. Firstly, uh, we always like to, and we, and we do this with all of the webinars in the series, we'd like to quickly revisit why we have an intranet. Um, quite often as well, we'll uncover some fantastic processes that you can embed in your intranet today. Uh, you, you may need some, some buy-in, some support, some other areas of the business to make these things happen on the intranet. And to help you achieve that, make you successful in, in, in doing that, um, it's really useful best practice to tie these things back to uh, your overall intranet objectives. Um, then we'll walk through those 12 business process where an intranet really delivers value and which we think should be should be managed on the intranet. We won't have time to go into detail of all of those, so we just picked six, uh, six of the best processes and how to apply them. And then towards the end, we should have some time for some questions uh, and, and, some, and some polls. Um, so to our first agenda item, revisiting why we've gotten uh, why we've got an intranet. Now a lot of time and effort and scoping and building and designing probably went into your intranet. It is that living, breathing space. We called it the heart of the organization earlier. Um, but why was it originally built? Uh, now your objectives may no longer be relevant. They may have changed as the business change. If you've been uh, attended any of our previous webinars, hopefully you've made some great changes to your intranet over the last few months as well. Or um, well, you may have inherited the intranet or this could be the first time that you've done one. Um, so it's great to revisit those, those objectives. Start over if you have to. We always ask four key questions. Why we do something in business. Does it save us money? Does it make life easier for the staff? Does it improve customer experience? Does it give us competitive advantage? Now those last two, how can an intranet help those? There might be some questions there, but we're going to explore how they can, uh, how they can be delivered through a better intranet tightly integrated into the day-to-day -day work of staff, intranets should be essential tools that deliver clear business benefits. There's an excerpt from Essential Intranets by James Robertson of Step 2 Design. James is a, a leader in intranet thinking and strategy in Australia. He's been doing this for 20 years, around the same time that Elcom has been around, so we work closely with James, um, and we appreciate his thought leadership in this, um, in this area. So if you don't have your objectives handy or, as I said, you've inherited the intranet or, or they've, they've got blurred, we've just captured seven here that you might use. And we'd like you to think when we talk about these 12 processes of how you can apply them to, to these objectives. So firstly, um, is what I want to do on the intranet aligned with our overall business goals? Uh, for example, if the goal is better customer service or the strategy is better customer service, what can I do on the intranet that's going to help us deliver on that strategy? Engagement, staff engagement. Um, what can we do with the intranet to increase uh, staff engagement? Productivity, it's usually there. Um, what can we do on the intranet that's going to improve productivity? Collaboration, a lot of CEOs walking around whispering to their executives, we want better collaboration, we want better collaboration. How do we do that? And how can the intranet play a part in helping us deliver that? Cost savings, always there. We'll have a look today at how you can prove that these processes that we're going to ask you to try and embed into your intranet can save the business money. Governance and compliance, making sure there's no errors, it's up to date documents, making sure the right information is at the fingertips of the right people at the right time. How can these processes we're going to look at today help deliver that? And culture, a bit more of an intangible, but can the intranet and these processes that we're going to embed improve the company uh, culture? Um, so those are some objectives. Um, so pick those that are, that are relevant to you. 
And now we'll look at the 12 processes and have a think about how these processes can deliver on those objectives. I'm just going to read these through. Um, so we've got connecting people, accessing forms and templates, publishing and authoring content, managing an event, managing a project, uh, replacing paper forms and emails with workflow, facilitating learning and training, managing HR processes, onboarding, supporting the IT help desk, delivering customer service, and supporting continuous improvement. Now, I can already hear a few of you saying, well, wait, no, we've got other systems that can do these things. And, and look, that, that's probably true. Um, it's, it, 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 it may be true. It really depends on the scale and the nature of your organization. If you've got 500 desktop machines, uh, you're probably going to need a bespoke IT help desk um, solution there. You may already have an LMS to deliver the learning and training in, in point number seven. Um, but what we hope is that there are a couple in there um, that you can easily identify. So you know what, I could bring those into my intranet. And you know, for a smaller company that's only got you know, 20 or 30 computers, uh, just a form and a workflow process on the intranet may well support the IT help desk process. Um, so as I mentioned, we're going to focus just on six of those. We're going to a bit of, of detail. And we're going to explain what we mean by each process. We'll cover off what you need to deliver that process on the intranet, and then we'll explain the value and the benefits of those to help you bring these processes into the intranet. So first up, connecting people. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest topics and, and one of the more intangible, uh, but it really does underpin what intranets are all about. The connections within any organization are practically limitless staff member to staff member, employee to manager, team to team, department to department, the lines are infinite. And when you get cross-functional teams working together, it becomes even more complex. But the introduction of social media uh, type uh, functionality onto an interest has really brought that connection of people together. It's now much faster, it's now m much more visible, the collaboration's faster and easier. Um, but I guess the intangible aspect of those is, is also can these tools foster a sort of camaraderie and, and togetherness? I suppose in summary what we mean by connecting people is it helps to create a culture of collaboration within the organization. What do you need? Well, to, uh, to deliver on connecting people, you need the ability to find people, uh, to dig into particular skill sets. Um, you'll need the ability to quickly and efficiently build cross-functional teams, and create team spaces. The connections will be visible um, within the organization. So you need those social media type tools on your intranet platform, and most good platforms will have those tools available now. And what are the benefits, finally? Well, the benefits we're seeing of much, much faster collaboration, great efficiencies. We're starting to see a drop off of email as everybody can contribute uh, content. It's that culture of collaboration. Um, everyone can contribute on the same page uh, in the same manner in, in, a, in a method that they're used to doing. It also allows you to gather for the first time more unstructured information. Uh, to use an old cliche, those water cooler conversations are now playing out on these social media type functions that you can get on a modern intranet platform. Um, I suppose in summary, the intranet connects people in your organization better than almost any other tool or platform uh, you can imagine. Um, so before we move on to the next one, um, over to Sif for a quick poll. Thanks, Kevin. So let's run a quick poll to get a better understanding of how you're using your internet, assuming you have one, of course. OK, this is looking really interesting. So 40% connecting people, 73% forms and workflows, 47% ideation and innovation, 33% onboarding, and 33% customer service. So any thoughts before we continue, Kevin? Yeah, that is interesting. Um, although in, in, in many ways not surprising, uh, we are going to cover forms and workflows today, and, and my opening statement on those, I expect you're, you're doing this already, so probably not surprised there. Um, the bottom two, 33% onboarding and customer service, that's interesting. Um, I'm glad we've picked those uh, today because it should give you an opportunity to see how you can use your intranet a bit better. Only one third 
um, of the audience currently using their intranets. So that and connecting people, 40%, look, we think that's where it's growing. Um, as the social media tools get better, aimed at corporate use. Um, so I'm glad to see that's, that's, that's on the rise. So that's really interesting. Thank you, Siv. Okay, number two, authoring, publishing, accessing content. Okay, this is quite straightforward what we mean. Um, content is king, so they say, um, in both co content marketing to customers but also internally. Um, in times of rapid change that are now, policies are changed, data is gathered, privacy protected, marketing messages adjusted, people trained. I information needs to be available at light speed. And, and on top of that, you, you need to have a tool in the internet to get that information out of people's heads and into a place where everybody can access it. And that's what the internet can be there for. This is a key process that we think the internet should be. It should be where the majority of internal content and information gets published. And, but you need to unlock it from all the different corners of the organization. You need um, a set of tools to enable people to, to put the content on there. But on top of that, because now we're able to gather content from so many people and so much content really quickly, it's really important to have the ability to target or personalize that content um, so that it's much more relevant and people aren't uh, rifling through lots of different and irrelevant messages. Uh, just a, a quick note at the end, as you open up the content and the contribution, um, you, for sensitive stuff, you might want to have a workflow on there before the content gets published. So that's what we mean by content. What do we need to deliver it? Well, we need the, the ease of use. We need people to be able to easily put information on the internet, so some kind of Microsoft Word style editor. Um, you need permissions and group-based access control, and that tag and target capability. Make sure that information is targeted to a specific user group. Uh, that will make a huge difference. UCG, that's user-generated content tools. Introdu make sure you introduce tools like blogs, wikis, the social stuff we've already talked about. That's where you can start collecting important information from all around the business. Um, and lastly, I mentioned that workflow earlier to make sure the content's accurate. So what are the benefits? Well, the benefits are now we are unlocking information from all over the the organization. Think how you can open up your intranet to everybody so they can contribute. Information will be fresher, it will be more up to date, there will be less errors. Um, and, and note there on the mobile phone, it's going to, going to be much more accessible. People can check on their phones for information they need. Ultimately, when you've achieved this, when you get there, you will have arrived at a, a more self-serve uh, environment for people across the organization getting the information that they need. I'm pretty sure if you look in your inbox today, half of it will be people asking you for information that exists in the organization somewhere already. Your job as internet managers is to make sure that we're bringing that and surfacing that up on, on the internet. Um, and we're very passionate about that. Um, number three, uh, forms and workflow. Now from the poll we can see, that, and, I, and I thought this was the case, 73% of, of the audience already using it. So we'll go through this one quickly. We obviously already identified there's a lot of value um, in electronically enabling forms. For those of you that are already using it, what I urge you to do, yeah, even in, in the corners of the most efficient organizations, there are little uh, inefficient and invisible processes going on that using a form and workflow could, could help. Uh, I'll give you an example. Right here at Elcom, one of our customers asks me to add a feature to the calendar module. Now, I could ask a developer in the kitchen, can you give me a quote for adding the feature to the calendar module? Um, or I could email them, can you please give me a quote for adding the feature to the calendar module? But what I do is I fill out a quote request form. Um, when I do that, I get an email back saying I'm going to receive my quote within 24 hours. So there's really good visibility, it's easy for both of us, but there's a lot more value there than that. The first value add there is the form makes sure that I give the developer all of the information I need. Even if I send an email, which is arguably better than asking them verbally, I still might miss a whole bunch of information that I need. The developer says, Kevin, I can't quote this. You haven't given me enough information. Whereas a form can force me to go and get that information and put it in. The second uh, real big uh, bit of value there is the visibility to the rest of the organization. Our product team, for instance, at the end of a week will run a report on all of those customer enhancement uh, inquiries um, and that will help them to shape 
what we build into the next version of our product. So there's an example from right here inside Elcom. There's some ideas there. If you, I know we're mainly using forms already, but there's more ideas on the screen of different forms. So go go forth into the business and, and, and talk to department heads and other key stakeholders about some of those processes um, and see where you can help them. The tools you need, you need a really easy to, easy to use form creator tool. These forms will change a lot. Um, constantly we're needing more information to give better results back to our customers. Um, so you, want, you don't have to go to a developer every time. There's some internet platforms where you might have to do that. Um, you need to find a platform that you can change the, the, the forms yourself. You need to support a lot of different field types in order to get better quality information. So a radio button, for instance, allows the user, the user to make one choice versus multiple um, or check boxes where they can check more than one. You also need smart forms. Um, forms for things like conditional fields. So let's say I'm uh, working in a retail environment where I need a uniform. I'm coming on to order a uniform onto the intranet. Um, if I've answered I'm male to question two, it should give me the options to select the sizing from male type of clothing um, rather than female. I mean, you can go even better than that and in the, the third bullet point, pre-populating. Probably already knows that I'm male because it knows my, my user profile and I'm already logged in. So just pre-populate all of those things. Uh, but you do want those conditional fields in there. We've talked about information overload. Let's make things as easy as possible. And we can do really smart things with workflow um, with those smart forms as well. So I think the benefits are pretty clear. It's going to be faster. It's more efficient than paper-based or email. There'll be less mistakes because we're getting the information to the form the first time around. Um, and then there's that visibility we were talking about, enabling the management to have a look at what's happening across the business through reporting um, on the forms. Still number three, I broke workflow out. Uh, what, what, what we mean by workflow in this context is the ability to route data, uh, not just forms, um, around the organization for approval, um, but also input. This is what really can bring business processes to life. And I'll give you another example. If I submit a purchase request, the smart form will detect if I've put that it's more than 10K, it will go to their CEO for approval. If it's under the CFO, it's fine. Um, but we've got a workflow tool in there that gives me a custom email back after I've submitted the form once it's been approved that says, Yes, that's been approved, and here is a list of our preferred suppliers. So the process is not just ending with an approval. The process is ending with, here is a list of preferred suppliers so that I make the right decision when I go to make that purchase. And, and you, can, you can imagine that, um, that example throughout the business. It really allows you to add a lot of value to your process automation. What you need for workflow is very similar for tools, something that performs, something easy to use that's drag and drop and allows you to almost paint workflows um, around the business. Um, didn't want to get too technical today, but integration with the Active Directory, that, um, will, that will capture some of the staff hierarchies. A lot of approvals are done by managers, so we can just send it to a manager. It's a, it's a lot easier, and that information lives within Active Directory usually. Um, don't make the approvers work too hard. You know, quite often they're on the uh, on the executive. They don't like complicated things, so they should be able to get an email with a request and a single click to approve a request. The tool should also have escalations in it. We've we've had some horror stories of people that have gone to automate their processes with workflows, and in fact, it's ground all of the processes to a halt uh, because people are not approving things in the new workflow system. So. You need to make sure that it's culturally embedded, but also you've got escalation options. So if um, a manager hasn't approved something within 24 hours, um, it can be escalated to another manager to approve. Um, so those are the things that you need. I think the benefits for workflow, again, are very similar to forms. They work very closely together. Uh, it's going to speed up the process. Uh, it brings a lot of visibility. At, at any stage in a workflow, you should have an email that goes back to the originator that keeps them informed of where something is in the process. Um, the other benefit is it, 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 it's not just approvals. You can bring entire uh, processes to life. Um, for instance, I've got performance reviews there. It's another one you know, where, you, where you could go and do it in another system, but you can do it using hidden fields. And a staff member can select new performance review form do a self-assessment, press submit, 
and when that arrives at the manager, the system's exposed hidden fields um, that the manager can then put their um, appraisal in. Um, so you can you can manage some uh, some quite complex processes with some simple tools. Um, so that's forms and workflow. And um, now we we get into the more exciting ones for me, the ones where you're, you guys are, are using these things a bit less. Um, and I think I think there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, and I've given one on the on the screen there. You can see there's a whole bunch of onboarding software solutions out in the marketplace that you could just go and put in just for just for onboarding. But the question I have is, do you really need a separate system for onboarding of your staff? Really? Uh, I think a good intranet platform should have all of the tools for onboarding right there in front of you. Uh, I mean, content and quizzes may, may usually do the job. Um, put some video in, you can put the vision statement, the mission statement, welcome from the CEO, product overviews, have a checklist. By all means, um, have they done their OHS tour? Have they, have they, do they know where the fire exits are? All of those kind of things, but all there uh, in your intranet platform. Um, there's also some other tremendous advantages um, for, for us as intranet managers to ensure that the onboarding happens on the intranet. And the first one is it allows you to give a hugely positive impact. Um, on the new person and on the intranet. If they do all of their onboarding on the intranet and they have a good experience from doing that, guess what? They're going to love the intranet, which means they're going to love you, which means they're going to keep coming back to the intranet. They will get from day one that the intranet is the place to go to do stuff and to find stuff out. So you get them while they're fresh, get the onboarding done on the intranet, um, and it will, it will mean a, a happy intranet user um, for their whole career within your organization. That's why I get quite excited about onboarding. I really believe it belongs on the intranet. So with only one third of you doing it now, see what you can do. Come and talk to us. We might be able to help you um, if you need a business case for that. What do you need? As I mentioned before, it's all in there. Um, if you've got a, a platform already, that is. Or if you're new, make sure you're looking at a platform that has um, these. These are pretty basic tools. It's just content, multimedia libraries, quiz and forms to make sure they've understood the information in the induction or onboarding program. Um, the staff directory is, is a great additional tool that you can have um, so that people can look through different people, have photos if you can so they might be able to recognize them, um, have single sign-on set up so that when they arrive on their first day, they're already logged in and ready to go and they don't have another password to remember. The benefits, well, the benefits, are, you know, I think I've already, I've already covered them covered them off, but I mean, nothing says what the bleep have I just done louder than turning up on your first day um, to be stared at blankly by a whole bunch of people that didn't know you were coming, there appears to be nowhere for you to sit, and uh, they haven't even given you a computer um, or a phone. Um, so a great opportunity is that uh, even pre-onboarding, a new hire form, back to forms and workflow, the manager fills out the new hire form, your smart form tool We'll send all the payroll and super information to payroll and all the IT requirements to IT. Neither of those departments can see the data uh, for the other department. Um, so on day one, the new employee w walks in and it's all set up and ready to go. Um, and then they get the awesome experience of interacting with the intranet. It's pretty much the first thing um, they do. So overall, it'll have a massively positive effect. Number five, delivering customer service. Again, a lower uh, amount of, of you guys using this, um, which I'm not surprised about. Um, you know, I, I've often pondered the question, why, why don't all intranets just look like Google's homepage? Um, you simply type in what you want uh, to find out, and 99 times out of 100, you're going to get the answer in the first click. Um, but of course, one of the main reasons for the intranet is for our organizations to be able to push information out. Um, that is information that the user doesn't know that they don't know, um, or information they didn't think they needed to know, and obviously you can't do that with, with Google. Um, however, a Google top search capability is really important. Um, if you're going to use your internet as a customer service tool, we've got customers uh, both uh, in branches where you've got frontline staff uh, querying the internet when someone walks into a branch and asks a question. 
we've got uh, clients where um, there's a contact center and someone rings in and asks a question and they query the internet. Um, so you need that powerful search. Um, but why is the internet a good tool for that? Well, we know it's easy to publish to, so you know it's going to be up to date, you know it's going to be accessible, we can target the information. And back to that point on Google, we can also put up to date information on that front page, front and centre. Uh, example, you are working in an electricity provider, there's an outage in Maroubra, within five minutes of the outage the phone starts ringing, pretty good chance that that phone call is going to be connected to the outage. Well, guess what, there's a ticker on the internet already that allows you to explain the engineers on site and your power will be restored but in between two and four hours or whatever the message says. So a lot of extra value there um, in doing that. And the other values is if you are looking for something uh, to help a customer, you can connect with, a, with an expert using those connectivity tools that we talked about earlier. Um, so that's what we mean by delivering customer service. Um, what do you need? You need a powerful search engine. Uh, make sure that any internet platform you're using or evaluating has powerful search capabilities. Um, the design, the taxonomy, uh, and the categorization of your data and the information architecture are also quite important when users don't really know what they're looking for and they need to browse around or they do a search and they're overwhelmed with the number of results that they've got back. Um, and of course that ability to put really up-to-date um, you know, alert or outage information in our example up on the screen too. The benefits, quite, they're quite simple, um, they're better customer service, you can lower the cost of your customer service um, through, through faster answering and you can spread your updates across multiple touch points, whether that's in branch, on the phone, you can probably push information across your website as well. Um, so that was number five, delivering customer service and finally another one that I noticed was was lower, I think it was actually close to 50%, um, which I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited about because I, I, this is another one that I feel passionately about, um, is having the internet uh, really as, a, as a, a continuous improvement tool and there's a number of ways that you can do that, and sharing best practices and checklists and you can introduce gamifications and we've got some clients with ladders and scoreboards and things like that on there, uh, but I'd like to focus on, um, on the middle one there, the ideas and suggestion box. Um, now you can implement this in, in a number of, what, what is an ideas and suggestion box? It can be a number of things, it can be a simple uh, form, some of our clients have um, just used a social, um, uh, a social feed that's dedicated to ideas. Um, why is the internet a good tool? Why do I, I, I believe that it should be done in there? Well again, everybody's got access to it, um, people, everybody can contribute, someone might post an idea, three people might think and post that is brilliant, a fourth person might say actually you've forgotten one key element here and you could kill an idea before you spend money on it. Um, so it's really powerful for that, it, the internet's got the visibility, it's got the um, it's got the capabilities of getting everybody to contribute and that's where the flesh for ideas you know, genuinely comes from. Um, the tools that you need, again, it's a bit like onboarding, I think all the tools you need are there uh, or they should be there in a good internet platform. Some of the implementations I've seen, you know, the, you know a big tile with a light bulb or a suggestion box uh, icon, uh, the social group that I mentioned and then you know, more formal processes where um, users submit ideas, they get workflowed to a panel of people who may discuss them in a meeting and then and then put the, the, the successful ideas back out to, you know, to the, almost crowdsourcing um, the ideas and innovation to every part of your organization and, and some organizations it's hard to reach those corners and, and that's where the, the best ideas uh, might be. I think the benefits, are, again, of having the ideation and innovation stuff on your intranet is that everyone can contribute. Um, do you need an ROI for this? Well, you know, put, it to, put it to the decision makers this way. If this tool can help us get a new product or a new idea uh, to market faster, um, then we should be able to put a monetary value on it. Um, so look, I'm very passionate about onboarding, uh, about onboarding and the innovation piece. Um, I think they should really live on the intranet and uh, we'll be here to, to help you uh, get those um, get those processes embedded in your intranet. So that, uh, that wraps up the, the six processes. We'll have a, a quick poll um, before we go into the, the sort of Q&A and, and, and the summary. Over to you, Sif. Okay, thanks, Kev.
the question for our final poll is, which of the following is the most important for your organization? Okay, so this is quite interesting. Um, we have 58% selecting well-connected workplace, 33% selecting efficient processes, 8% selecting delivering excellent customer service, and no one selecting innovation or rapid and effective induction. So any thoughts, Kevin, before we continue? Well, yeah, that, look, that's a little bit surprising, um, but it correlates nicely with the previous poll. Um, there, there are less people using their intranets uh, for the innovation and induction pieces. Um, because they're not seen within the organisation by the sound of it um, as, as important areas. Um, so there's not really a surprise there. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity to investigate those areas further um, and look at bringing them into, into the intranet. 58% um, at Well Connected Workplace, and that's not surprising. It is a trickier one to, um, I guess, to define um, what does a Well Connected Workplace mean. Um, and hopefully we've covered off some of those today. I think we're going to continue to see a rise in the social, uh, the social media type functionality within the um, within the intranet. So um, we'll watch out for that. Well, that's been really interesting. Thank you um, very much, everyone. Just to summarise, look what we tried to achieve, and, and we hope we've been successful with these webinars, um, is to to help you. Um, make sure you're getting the most um, out of your intranet, um, and, th and then we will we will continue with the series. I think there are still so many avenues that we can explore. Um, always remember to try and align what you want to do um, to the overall business objectives. We find from experience it's going to help you get uh, the support that you need from within the business um, or the organisation. Um, always ask, can we do this on the intranet? Um, keep that question front in mind when when people are asking or you uncover problems that need to be solved within the organization. Um, talk regularly with all your stakeholders. Um, you know, organize monthly, um, monthly chats. Uh, get, them a, get your own social group on the internet and have a chat with them about how you can improve it. Um, and of course, you're always welcome to, uh, to contact us uh, through any of the usual channels um, if you'd like any advice on how to ensure that you get the most um, out of your intranet. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I hope that's been useful. Um, we'll see. Do we have any time for some questions, Siv? Um, yeah. So um, before we actually get into the q and I just wanted to let everyone know that the resources section on our website has lots of fantastic and practical content. So please feel free to visit on the link shown on the screen. So Kev, first question. We are looking for a board portal software. I believe we could do this on the internet. Any thoughts? Board portal. Yeah. Okay. That, look, that's interesting. Uh, I hadn't thought of that as a as a process to include in in here, and uh, I don't think it was in that list of twelve either. Um, but it's certainly uh, an, an example of uh, something that an internet can deliver. Absolutely. Um, I think we've, we we may even have some customers that have got a board portal um, just. You know, just on the top of my mind here, just secure access for board members only. Um, the ability to to manage meetings and minutes and tasks in there are all things that an intranet uh, should be able to do. Um, so, so my thoughts uh, would be, yeah, again, this is another example of a process um, that before you you go off um, putting in yet more software at more cost, can you create a board portal? Um, on your intranet, and they are, what a fantastic uh, bunch of people to impress with a solution like that. Um, so whoever asked that question, um, if you need any further information, we'll be happy to brainstorm out um, how that might work for you. Okay, great. Um, so we are running out of time, and we can only get to one more question. So second question, we are directed to allow the use of third-party cloud-based apps, but want to bring them into the intranet. Any advice? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a tricky one. We are we're seeing a we, we are seeing a bit of a bit of that. It's um, it, it, so, some organisations. I think the more progressive ones will will say you, you know go use whatever uh, tools you need to, to get the job done. They're cloud based. They, they don't need to be installed. Um, but I guess the 
and, and, I, and I agree with that. I think that's I think that's a, a good philosophy for a company to have. Um, but I think you need to, to bear in mind or perhaps find a way of anchoring those um, applications in, perhaps embed them um, into the intranet. Again, it drives people, it drives people back there um, and, and gives you a little bit of control. Um, so look, I, I think you have to watch this, watch this space for, for a lot of organizations who are only just seeing this kind of BYO application um, process which you're obviously already seeing, but I think you're doing the right thing. Um, but always, yeah, keep an eye on them. See if you can integrate them with the internet, or at least look at what they're doing and, and discuss regularly with the groups that are using those applications whether or not you can actually embed that process better um, into the existing internet. So just keep the conversation going. I think on that one. That is all we have time for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and I hope you have a great week. Thanks, everyone.